In this video, we're going to cover two very important things. First, we're going to calculate your theoretical maximum heart rate using the most reliable equation out there to date, which is not the 220 minus the age formula. And second, we're going to collect a really easy one, your resting heart rate. These two numbers are very important to more accurately assess what zones you should be training in for your cardiovascular fitness. If you don't know anything about zone training, I've got this video right here you can check out. Alongside this entire playlist, if I don't already have the playlist all completely released yet, unless you're in the future and then it's all done, in the link in the description below, I've got a packet that you can follow along for this video and every other video in this entire cardio series. As you follow along this video, the calculations, the zones, every percentage breakdown for each one of these zones, and even the Carbonin method. First, before we calculate it, let me briefly explain the idea of theoretical maximum heart rate. Theoretical maximum heart rate is based off of equations that scientists have come up with over the years. It's aimed at taking into consideration people's ages as well. When they get older, their theoretical maximum heart rate may tend to decrease in a similar way that your metabolism changes as you age as well. Neither the CDC nor the American Heart Association ever recommend reaching 100% of your maximum heart rate, even for vi vigorous exercise. However, for some athletes, it's okay to reach your 100% maximum heart rate. Max Maximum heart rate is different from theoretical maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate requires the usage of fancy technology sometimes, and you have to pay to get that done so that way it's accurately assessed for you individually. Theoretical maximum heart rate, however, is equation-based, and that's why they call it theoretical. The accuracy of the following formula I'm about to share with you is the most accurate to date, with about an 85% degree of accuracy, and that's a rough estimate. The 220 minus the age previous equation that was used is not the most accurate, so that's why they've done away with recommending that one, and now we use the Tanaka formula. The Tanaka formula is simply 208 minus, in parentheses, 0.7 times your age. If you have that packet with you, you can just write this out and it'll store everything. It'll just guide you right through all the calculations you need to do from here on out. So there you have it. You have your theoretical maximum heart rate. Don't forget order of operations. Do the things in the parentheses first before you do any type of subtraction. So multiply the things in the parentheses and then you have age times 0.7 and then you subtract 208. The next important number you should know is your resting heart rate. Now, what can your resting heart rate tell you before I tell you how to collect it? Well, your resting heart rate basically is an indicator of your cardiovascular fitness. Individuals with a relatively high resting heart rate tend to be seen, unless they have any underlying conditions, as not being as fit as someone with a lower resting heart rate. However, take nothing as a replacement for medical advice, but sometimes the lower, extremely low resting heart rate can be an indicator of of underlying health conditions as well, but generally it's seen as a good indicator of cardiovascular fitness. So that's your resting heart rate in the general meaning of the word, but you can also use your resting heart rate as an indicator of how fast your heart rate during exercise returns to that resting heart rate. The faster your heart rate in action returns to your resting heart rate when you stop doing exercise and you start slowing down indicates your cardiovascular fitness. If it takes you a while for your resting heart rate to come back when you're stopping exercise, it means that you're not quite cardiovascularly fit or you can improve it. So how do we find that resting heart rate? You you can just use two fingers and we'll find what's called your radial pulse, which is along your thumb right here. And you'll just feel for a pulse right there. You wanna avoid putting the two fingers on your neck because sometimes some people pass out during exercise when they're doing that. I don't know how hard they're pressing, but just go for your radial pulse instead. It's much better. Make sure that your hand is above your heart so that way it's not down here. It's much easier to measure when it's up here. And what you're just gonna do is you're gonna count however many beats are happening over the period of 30 seconds. You can even do it for a minute and that's fine. But if you do it for 30 seconds, multiply that number by two. 30 seconds is gonna give you a much better indication of what your resting heart rate may be as opposed to just waiting for 10 seconds and trying to multiply by six. Simply because you might initially initially have a spike in your heart rate because some people get excited when they're about to measure their heart rates. It wears off after about 
15 seconds. One last way you can measure resting heart rate is you take the two fingers and you stick them out there and you hit that like button if you're enjoying this video and it's helpful content. Thank you so much for doing that. So you might be asking, okay, so I just collected my resting heart rate with my fingers to measuring my pulse. How am I supposed to measure my heart rate throughout exercise to try to understand, am I reaching my theoretical maximum and am I even close or where I'm at? Well, one way to do that is of course, just take your pulse with your fingers. But an easier way is to use a really reliable EKG heart rate monitor monitor. This is a chest strap. It's much more accurate than the wrist ones that move around. And I do have a link in the description below to this particular EKG based chest strap monitor. It's going to be much more accurate. So now you understand two very important numbers as indicators for your cardiovascular fitness. So put those to use in one way that you can put them to use is for your zone training. You just take that theoretical maximum heart rate number and you multiply it by the specific percentages for each one of your zones, zones one through four and five, if you're an accomplished athlete. And another way of assessing your zones is to take into consideration your resting heart rate using something called the Carvonin method, which is just one more calculation to do, but it's very simple. Again, that method is more accurate because it takes into consideration your resting heart rate in considering your zone trainings. Both videos over here will be able to guide you through either the theoretical maximum heart rate and the zone training and explaining those or the Carvonin method. I might have an entire playlist up there too for cardiovascular fitness. And if I don't have any of that up there, it's because I'm still building it and you can watch that.